All right, let's I, uh, let's talk about something I believe, that we both agree on. I believe on. that. I believe that we will. I believe that we will lose. I believe that we will lose. I believe that we got an ass beat. I believe that Panama is better. I believe that this girl's la 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 la. U.S. sucks. Oh, US I thought sucks. you were still making fun of Heat fans. U.S. sucks. <laughs> ah, ooh, ah, ah, ah. I don't think that's how the chant goes. I think it's how it goes. I think how it goes. I, look, I watched the game from the Goodyear blimp, ladies and gentlemen. Bird's eye view. So I could see all of the little ants running around on the field. And let me tell you something about U.S. soccer that has not changed over the 150,000 years they've been playing. I don't care who the names are. I don't care what, oh, the bloodlines, whatever you want to talk about. It's undeniable that this country plays like a pickup game every damn time. Sometimes they win. Sometimes, they, a lot of times they lose, excuse me. <laughs> but they play like a pickup game. What I mean by is so many times, first of all, complete lack of accuracy in the short game. Passes going far, short, out of bounds. Guys making passes that are panic passes. They don't know what the next play is. It's like, oh, let me get this to get rid of it. You pass it to nobody, right? Uh, la- blinders on in the scoring area, in the scoring third, right? Last night, Haji Wright, you got a man right here. Like, well, I gotta shoot the ball because I'm a strike. I think more knockout goals in international competition than Cristiano Ronaldo, Haji Wright. Congratulations! <laughs> now take your ass home. Take <laughs> more your ass- World Cup elimination goals than uh, take, Cristiano Ronaldo. Take your ass home and, and yeah. put that on. Well, your what fridge. you're saying is, is is not wrong, and I think last night it doesn't often happen where I'm just like actively rooting against my team especially when it comes to the, the national teams a handful of times I can there was one USF game against Randy Shannon where I wanted Randy Shannon out in the worst way and I was just cheering for USF at that point uh last night was one of those nights and I got big up to Bielsa for actually going for it even though he was suspended putting out there uh, an aggressive starting 11 for Uruguay to show you, this uh, this U.S. men's national team program has lost to Panama on home soil twice in the last 12 months. And there's been a lot of golden generation talk, and there's been a lot of talent talk. Mm. And I will concede that this is probably, when you look at the clubs that these guys are, are playing with, when you look at the actual talent on the field, this is worthy of people saying this is one of the more talented U.S. soccer generations ever. So if you want to take swipes at the talent, that's isn't that's, this supposed to be the best team ever? Like, isn't this it, supposed to be the team that's supposed to win been the World the Cup? Golden, America it, is hosting. It's been dubbed the Golden Generation, and they've lost to Panama twice in the last twelve months. Everything that glitters ain't gold, Billy. Uh, who could have seen this coming? Outside of everyone who has followed U.S. soccer passionately over the last five years, I follow it very passionately. Yeah, and you knew you knew one day this day would come. Now I don't know if the federation is actually going to do the right thing. I'm so over this federation and the nepotism that exists within it that I don't expect them to actually do the right thing. So this is an appeal to Greg Berhalter. Resign with two Gs. You step aside. You got brought back. And I feel like he got brought back. New t-shirt. Resign with two Gs. I feel like he got brought back because the U.S. Soccer Federation wanted to avoid a lawsuit. A lawsuit, by the way, a mess that was entirely constructed by Greg Berhalter because he couldn't shut his trap around reporters. And he made an ugly situation even uglier with Gio Reyna. He couldn't keep that in behind the locker room doors. He couldn't do that. That had to play out in the public sphere. Okay, fine. He's brought back. What, are you, what did you think was going to happen with Greg Berhalter out there? This guy wants to come in. And play like Barcelona and boss teams that he's more talented than. Play what? Like boss what? Panama. You can't boss Panama. Hold on. Play what? Play, play like Barca football. But play possession football. There's, there's no. You you just mentioned it. There's no possession here. If I don't this, trust this team, if they travel this, to El Salvador to play them off the pitch, dude. Saying they want to play like Barcelona is like saying the Detroit Pistons want to play like the 2017 Warriors. I understand. Look, like, take take swipes at the talent all you want. I will say for U.S. soccer history, there's plenty of great examples but, but, of them showing up with a gritty eleven and playing a defensive style, a counterattacking uh, a style, and getting the results needed. They did it against literally the greatest soccer team I have ever seen with Spain in the Confederations Cup. I've seen this country. 
when it adopts that mentality, actually gets success. Lean on the athleticism. Long ball it to a speedster over the top. Get a goal. Because in That's the international much. game, it's not how you do it. It's doing it. Amen. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. It's not. It's not how you do it. It's doing it. But it's also how you do it. Like they don't. Like, tell, tell, listen, listen, ask so, Greece if so, they liked how so, they did it in 06. So, no, I get it. Like there's always going to be an example of someone who just like Italy is the example 04, most rather. of the time, right? Like where they just yeah. shit their way to a championship. But my my point is this: like you keep talking about the talent, but the talent doesn't play like it's talented. It plays like it plays hard. I think they play hard. I don't I think, think so. Oh, you don't I, think I, I, I don't think, think they, they play, play hard enough. I think they play dumb. They play yes. dumb. Yes, yes. And, and that's the part where you can have as many players as you want playing in the EPL and in Germany and all these places. But, like, if they come back and they still play dumb like they're from New Jersey, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> New like, Jersey catching it straight. Oh, New yeah, Jersey's no. one of the great soccer states. Yeah, well, yeah. The, the, exactly. a, lot, a lot of great one talent of the, came one, out of it, New Jersey. No, <laughs> no, he, he's right. One of the great soccer what? States. United States. United States of suck, right? Yeah. New Jersey is not like Rio. I, I, it's not I, like I think we're in agreement in terms of in, in terms of how they play. Mm -hmm. Like you can, you and I can have their disagreements about the level of talent. That's fine. Uh, if someone wants to tell me how how can you say they're talented when they're losing to the likes of Panama, I concede. Fine. I think this team does play stupid, dumb, and I think. It just goes back to the general approach and the ego. What I don't like about Greg Berhalter, what I've told him to his face on Chelsea Mic'd Up, I think I think this style is really, really dumb to play on the international level. I think you see, I will concede that when you get to the, the knockout stages, this team is not going to be as talented as some of their opponents. And I will also concede that the, that does not matter. That does not matter, especially when you're hosting a World Cup in 2026. We've seen it time and time again in this sport. You don't have these guys in your camp for a very long time. So why are you trying to institute this really uh, sophisticated attacking scheme with, with, where you have all this possession? You have these guys in your camp for like four days at a time. What are you, what are you doing? Just be organized with defense. Get guys that play smart. Get guys that can adopt your mentality as a manager, can carry that message out, and not beat themselves. What the U.S. Soccer Federation did, which is, I theorize, avoid a lawsuit by bringing Greg Berhalter back, but what they did in doing so is they gave the players exactly what they wanted. If you, if you look at camp, everybody's so loose. We're having so much fun. Everyone loves Greg. Kumbaya. There are a lot of championship teams that hated their manager. Carly Lloyd spoke to it. We won. We won titles. Inspired, we hated our. Yeah. We hated our manager. Yeah. You need a manager that holds people personally responsible. Because, oh, how can you blame T uh, Greg Berhalter for Tim Weah punching a guy? I can, I can. That comes with a mentality. It all starts with that leader there, and you let a bunch of kids handpick their guy and look at the results. Now, no, no more, no more, no more making you happy. No, you don't have a say in this. You're going to have a manager that should come in there, run you ragged, and make you hate the sport of soccer. So, That's what you deserve. So you want Jose Mourinho? Oh, you know me. Uh, you know me. And, and Mourinho, like, look, I don't want to make this a Mourinho thing because that's a headline grabber and people will, will why, turn why that into we, something. Let's I just want, I want, I want an let's adult. Here, let me tell you. And Jose Mourinho fits his profile, which is why we'll go with Jose Mourinho as the avatar for this. I want an adult that has succeeded at the highest level. What has Greg Berhalter done to, 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 to be worthy of five years on the job? What has he done? He's a loser. He's a loser. He is a career loser. Don't talk to me about times that he had in Columbus. Get real. Columbus. He, I want imagine, someone that imagine. has had success on the club level, the international level, success at the highest level. Because when he tells your ass to be running laps with a tracker on your back, you at least know it's coming from someone that you should respect. Greg Berhalter doesn't command a room. I don't respect Greg Berhalter. How's Tim Way is supposed to respect Greg Berhalter? Uh, I told Greg Berhalter to his face his tactics were yo, wrong. Mike, that guy's a loser. He's a chump. Mike, let me ask you a question, man. How much of this is you, the soccer federation's overconfidence in the MLS as – as a source of anything. I think what this is, is the Soccer Federation doesn't actually answer to anyone. And we don't exist in a country where they actually feel the heat, which is why they brought Greg Berhalter back in the first place. While his brother's there in the Federation and just totally ignoring the passionate fan base that there is. Such that it is. Look, 
I, I wish that I lived in a country where the lower third is not Clay Thompson agrees to three or $50 million. <laughs> Big deal, where, where it's plastered from television to television, Greg Berhalter has to go. I don't live in that country. I don't think I ever will live in that country. It's a different place. And that's that, why you fail. Not I, you, this country. When it comes to this, that's why... You every, get a coddled federation. You get a, a, a subpar product, right? Given the resources that this country has, mm -hmm. right? The and federation I, is pulling in dough. It, it's the, the resources, the infrastructure, all that stuff. It staggers me. Like, when I, when I, when I watch... U.S. games, and I see these people in the crowd, I'm like, who are actually, what you guys actually think that the, the result is going to be something different? Like, it, it, it staggers me. When you, were, when you said the, yesterday that the 1998 team was supposed to do things, I'm like, do what? Do what, man? Dude, you see some of their matches against Brazil and Argentina oh, in the lead-up to that World the lead Cup. Up. Was... You can talk about exhibition friendlies, no, man. No, no, no. I'm not talking about exhibitions. I'm talking about Gold Cups and Copa America. It's like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, it's all right. You, you don't have to have amazing recall of the 1995 U.S. men's soccer team. We're it's cool. I'm just going to be there to check you We're on it. We're talking about 98. <laughs> like, We're not talking about 95. We're talking about 98. No, but, like, 95, 96, 97, the, there are other competitions that exist. If you want to, like – cast those aside and say that they're not like look at the brazil roster that that u.s men's national team hung with in the mid-90s look at it look at the argentinian oh, I, roster I, I gotta look like at there it. there was i'm rocking the shit right dude, now what like talking about man it's a different game it's, it's not about it's not always about talent do you need talented players yes but you need cohesion you need an, uh, you need a different sure, approach sure but you, you, you also need talent like yes you're right yeah. i'm not i'm not disagreeing with yeah. what you're saying and i'm not even disagreeing with like I, I'm a person who I'm I'm an aesthetic snob. I like to see it played right. You actually would like Greg Berhalter's style if, if he ever if, actually if they could knew how to play it. it right. If they had the talent and the discipline to play it, but but aesthetic. Or if it wasn't soaked in ego to even try to attempt that when you're playing on a choppy pitch with rocks on it in El Salvador. Well, I mean, you can play that way on a choppy pitch in El Salvador with rocks on it if you have players who grew up playing on playing, choppy pitches yeah. with rocks on them. But the problem is you got guys that came up to these academies with these manicured lawns and, and everything. Oh, there's a $750 fee to enter. No problem. We've got it. Like, that's that's your, your talent base. Mm -hmm. So you can't take them to them weird-ass places. It's not like Brazil or Argentina yeah. or, or many of these other place, places or, or even France where mm -hmm. these kids grew up playing in environments, right? But I digress. What I'm trying to say is this. It's environment. Your your Right. You're right in that cohesion matters. You're, you're right in that having a scheme and, and being able to execute it matters. You're even right. I'll even allow you that, hey, man, sometimes it's just a 30-yard bomb in a cloud of dust, and then we uh, fall back. That's, what, that's this nation's identity. Box, right? like, For the men's team, that's how they win. That's, a, that's when they have their success. But, but, and great goalkeeping to bail you out. Yes, but there's a cap to that if you don't have talent. <laughs> There's a cap. There, like, that's good enough for a round of 32 hmm. in the World Cup. Yep. That's good enough maybe for a round of 16. In 02, like, they, they got to the quarterfinals in 02. Yes, Torsten yes. Frings had that a handball. The, that was the – that was the that's the best American that's, team I've ever seen. Well, in terms of results, hard to argue. And they, play, they played a style that was conducive to what they had talent-wise. That, yeah, a giant-killing style. Yes, and but – there, there are good moments in this national team's program, and there's an identity. There, there's, <laughs> there's an identity there, and yes, what you're saying is is right. It, the soccer culture in this country, you can't expect to have dogs on your team when you're going against guys that have been playing barefoot in favelas, yeah, and man. it's literally their way out. You're not going to meet that mentality, that intensity, but you can beat them in other ways: structure, organization, a commitment to a common goal, and it starts from the top. It starts from that U.S. Soccer Federation. If I ask you, who's, who's the director of the U.S. Soccer Federation? Who's in charge here? People don't know. And that allows for this whole attitude of, of, of people that don't have to be held accountable for their actions. So, Greg, I have zero faith in them, even though they made a good hire with Emma Hayes. Greg Cody? Greg Berhalter, two oh. Gs. What has he done? I am asking you, dude. <laughs> you need to realize that this is a sham. An embarrassment, and they in all likelihood brought you back to avoid a lawsuit. So do the right thing, walk away, because you are not that guy. 2026 is around the corner. This team doesn't have qualifiers to actually find their form. What are you going to do what that you haven't done? done in the last five years? We've seen enough. 
We've seen enough. Red card, Tim Weah, oh, hard luck. You lost to them twice in 12 months, pal. Get out of here. You stink. You were given a job that you shouldn't have had in the first place, and against all odds, they brought you back. In spite of every U.S. soccer fan telling you this was going to happen, they didn't get out of a group with Bolivia and Panama in it. Bielsa was reveling at the opportunity. He was licking his chops as he was suspended to try and attempt to put a nail in your coffin. Bielsa, who the U.S. Soccer Federation didn't want to hire whatsoever because they know what they're doing. They brought in the sporting director from Southampton, everybody. Clear a lane. It's a joke of a federation. And you got 2026 staring at you like the barrel of a gun. So yeah, wake the f*** up and make an aggressive move. Yeah. There are big names available out there. Mourinho, fine. Klopp, fine. Give me a professional. Brandon Ingram. Give me a professional <laughs> with something on his resume and a, a dude that can walk into a room and command respect because these children out there are not respecting the manager and it's playing out on the field. It's playing out on the field. You have a golden opportunity. You're going to ruin it. Yeah. U.S. soccer, you're standing in your own, in your own way. And you don't see it. You don't see it. Take this seriously. It's happened twice in my adult life, a World Cup, here on uh, a men's World Cup here on U.S. soil. And you piss it away. We spent 18 months with the result, knowing the result of the World Cup and the mess that was left in our wake in Qatar. You spent several months in this asinine job search just to bring the guy back. And what does he do to reward your faith in him? He loses to Panama. A, a huge national embarrassment. What do I was there? Hey, you want to talk, talk to me about offside? I wish Company Ball and Con Concacaf came out with a joint statement and said, "Fine, he was offside." Panama still goes through. Panama scored yeah. three goals. You want to talk about the U.S. talent? Panama looked talented. Where is the U.S. talent? And Christian Pulisic, I love you. I think you are generally pronounce your name right. I, I think you are genuinely. I meant to say the most talented attacking player this country has maybe ever seen. I think you're worthy of that praise. I think. You're a Champions League winner. You showed in Serie A that it's not a fluke. You're one of the best players in Serie A for AC Milan. You finally show that you can stay healthy. And I think you've got the proper mindset. But this moment right here, where he tries to go and shake the, uh, the, the official's hand, I think he allegedly said, go celebrate with Uruguay. Okay, dude, that's fine. You got away with acting like such a petulant child on the pitch. I mean, you the, should have been given a yellow card. The official kind of acted like a child here in this video. No, 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 video. no. Chris, I, if you would have seen what Pulisic did that didn't get carded during the actual run of play, where he was just he, – he made contact with the official. He was acting like a child. Chris, he, he walked up and he talked. He said – like no, I go saw, celebrate with I saw the clip. Shake your hand. But I'm just say, I feel like the official can be the bigger person there and nah, give like a. What the hell with that? Go okay. take your losing ass home. Yeah, that's that's your go, captain, and it's uh, just not. You just gave him a fines. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that guy was <laughs> Christian Pulisic was insulting that official up and down. Was he officiating great last night? No. So what? Yet you have a game for your lives in a Copa America. You didn't. This is the first time I think since they actually had regular host in Copa America that the host didn't get out of the group stage. Uh, I believe so. Night, uh, it, I I'm, think they started this format in 1987. Yeah. Uh, maybe I read that tweet wrong, but it they gifted a path to the knockout stages to the U.S. and Greg Berhalter biffed it. Not only that, now Jesse Marsh. Who's American who Greg Burhalter openly feuds with because anytime anyone says anything about Greg Burhalter, his antennas go up and he feels like he has to address it because that's a mentality we have in that position. Jesse Marsh makes it to the knockout stages with Canada in a tougher group. So, Bad looks all okay. around. You could have had Jesse Marsh. He at least has some credentials. He at least has done some things over in Europe. Yo. But you didn't go Jesse Marsh. You went with Greg Burhalter. You went with now his mortal enemy. And Jesse Marsh has dragged, dragged Canada to the knockout stages. It's a joke of a federation. It's not all on Greg Berhalter. Greg Ber Berhalter has been who he has always been. There is zero surprise with Greg Berhalter laying an egg here.